Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of Hit the Block. Today we're going to call a method on a smart contract which is already deployed. We will also briefly talk about the notion of gas. First, open the terminal console. We're going to install three npm packages. The first one is a local testnet. It's called ethereumjs-test-rpc. The second package is Web3, which is a client for the JSON RPC interface of Ethereum. And the last one is SolC, which is the co compiler for, Solid for Solidity. Once you've installed those packages, we will, you will need to clone the GitHub repository of this episode where you will find the source code for this episode. So git clone and this URL. I will also paste this URL in the episode description, so don't worry if you didn't get it. Then we need to start the local testnet. So just type test RPC and you will launch a testnet. You will also create 10 accounts that you'll be able to use. Open the text editor and open the smart contract hello world.sol. So that's the same smart contract that we've created in previous episode. So it's very simple. There is just a constructor function that assign um, a string to a internal variable called message. And then there is a get a function, get message that returns the value of this internal, um, um, internal variable. So today we're going to call this get message method from outside this contract once it's deployed. And we're also going to talk about the concept of gas. We're going to repeat the same procedure as for the last episode, but this time I'll go a little bit faster. So first, create a new terminal window and create a new node session by typing nodes and enter. And then go back to your text editor and Open the file deploy.js, which basically contains the instruction to deploy our smart contract. So we're going to go uh, block by block. So the first block is where you create the Web3 object and you connect it to the network and then you check all the account that you have. So we're going, we're going to do this, control C, then go back to the node session and going to pass this block of instruction and press enter. Okay, so if you see this, it means it worked. Then we go back to our uh, deploy file and we're going to first compile our contract with SolC, the, Sol the Solidity compiler. Then we're going to create a contract object with Web3 and then we're going to build a transaction object. So I'm going to copy this whole block and I'm going to paste it. So it's from line 12 to 24 in the deploy file. And then I'm going to go back to the node session and paste all of this. and press enter. Okay, so now we have our um, transaction object. So finally, we just need to copy it to de deploy it to the network. So I will copy this block here from line 26 to line 28 of deploy.js. And then I go back to the node session. I copy this block and Okay, so here, what do we have? So first we've declare a contract instance variable and then we, uh, we deploy the, um, the smart contract with the send method here. And then we got return and a promise and we've, uh, we've assigned this promise to our contract instance object here. So now we'll be able to walk from this variable contract instance. So let's call a method with this object. So contract instance 
and all the methods are defined in the in the methods uh, object and in this method object we need to uh, type the name of our method so let's go back to our smart contract so go back to text editor hello world.sol and then we see that the name of our method that we're going to call is called get message so that's what we need to type so let's go back to the node session and here we can type get message okay and this get message uh, method we need to call it with the call function so oh no, sorry so first we need to call it like this so in our case there is no argument so we don't need to give it anything inside the parenthesis then we need to call it like this call uh, and then we're going to be written a promise so in a then like this and we're going to console log what we have okay so let's see okay that's what we have so why do we have this weird looking thing so let's go back to the definition of our contract and we see that our uh, message variable which will be returned is uh, a type bytes 32 uh, which is a type that is very uh, versatile that can be used for many things but for a string that will not be too long uh, you can use this type um, but obviously we need to do some uh, some uh, processing before we can use uh, th this return value because it's not it's not very clear uh, w what it is so going back to the node session uh, we're going to re-execute the last statement but instead of directly console logging the result we're going to do something else so here I'm going to catch the result in an anonymous function and I'm going to console log not the result but I'm going to transform this into a, a better representation so I can use a utility function in web3 utils and this is called x to ASCII like this and we're going to pass it this result thing and what we should see will be uh, hopefully more understandable so let's press enter and what do we have here yes we have something easier to understand so this is just hey cool we finish interacting with the smart contract before we finish with this episode i'd like to quickly tell you about the two kinds of uh, method call that you can use with ethereum so the first kind of method call that we've just used is called eth call so with this kind of method call you don't change the state of the blockchain and you uh, only one uh, uh, ethereum node will process your request so um, it will not cost you uh, any ether but the other kind of um, method call that you can use is called uh, eth send transaction and basically when you send a transaction like we first did when we deploy the contract you change the state of the blockchain um, and as a result uh, all the ethereum nodes need to process your transaction and so it's much more computation uh, intensive and logically you need to pay for it and you, you'll need to you'll pay with some ether uh, but you will not directly uh, w when you send a transaction you will not specify how much ether uh, you want to pay but you will specify two things which is uh, gas and gas price so gas is basically a measure of um, uh, how um, how uh, comp computationally intensive uh, is your your smart contract and when you uh, when you specify the amount of gas in a transaction you're just saying that 
uh, just setting the maximum uh, uh, limit for this gas consumption. Uh, but the gas in itself, it's not something that you can buy and sell. So you need uh, to um, to relate this gas with e ether, and that's why we have this other parameter, which is called gas price. So by specifying gas and gas price, you spec you specify to the network the maximum amount of ether that you're willing to spend for this transaction. In future episodes, we will come back to this uh, notion of gas because uh, that's quite difficult for beginners. That's it for today. We have learned how to send a method call to a smart contract which is already deployed. We've already briefly talked about gas. For the next episode, we will learn how to use Truffle, a framework for smart contract development. If you like this channel, please subscribe or give me a like or share. Bye-bye.